Now let's take a look at how we can manage the current of a discrete LED, especially taking a look at voltage current characteristics and the operating point. We really have two goals when it comes to managing the current associated with an LED. First, we want to minimize the current. That is, we want to only use what is necessary for the desired intensity. This is especially important when we have multiple LEDs. Our second goal, we'd like to minimize the complexity of the interface. That means that we would like to use a direct connection to the digital output when that's possible. Otherwise, we may need to use a current limiting resistor. Let's consider the interface circuit. Begins with our supply voltage VDD. Here's the LED itself. And typically we, we will need a current limiting resistance. And that would then be connected to our digital input output. Now when the DIO is in the high state, it looks like VDD. We have essentially zero volts across the LED and that means we have the LED in the off state. When we drop the digital output to the low state, that means it looks like ground and the LED becomes on. Now in the low state, the DIO looks like ground and we can look at the LED current as flowing from the supply through the LED and the current limiting resistor down to ground. We call this the current sinking interface. Now this is the current sinking interface. There's a second version that's called the current sourcing interface. And we simply interchange the position of the DIO and the power supply connection. In this case, the DIO connects to the LED. We have our limiting resistor in series, and then we connect the other side to ground. In this case, we raise the output to the high state to make the LED turn on. When the output is high, it sources current. So set to the high state to turn the LED on, set to the low state to turn the LED off. Now specifically for NIMI Rio on the MXP connectors, which are A and B, we want to use the current sinking form of the interface circuit. Then on the MSP port, connector C, we want to use the current sourcing version. MXP is sinking, MSP is sourcing. Question is, why and what's the difference between the two? Let's consider again the current sinking interface form. When we connect this to the MXP connector, we have an internal pull-up resistor to VDD. When the DIO is in input mode, then this connection back into my Rio is in high Z, that is high impedance, or it looks like an open circuit. Now consider the current through the LED. Well, with this path, we have no voltage drop across the LED. Therefore, we have zero current and the LED is off. Now, as I say, I recommend the current sinking interface for the MXP connector. Let's see what happens if you were to use the current sourcing interface on the MXP connector. Well, as we know, we've got this pull-up resistor to VDD. And when the DIO is in input mode, this looks like high Z, and we can see a small but yet potentially noticeable current flowing through the LED. The LED is going to be slightly on, and especially for high efficiency LEDs, this could be quite noticeable. The LED might look like it's normally on. Especially after executing a My Rio reset, or when you first turn on the product, all the DIOs are in the input state. Now I'd like to move on to considering in a little bit more detail what's happening at the DIO in terms of voltage and current. We'll look at the output voltage current characteristic. This characteristic is a plot of voltage 
as a function of current. And specifically, the voltage I mean is the voltage between VDD and the DIO output. Then the current would be the current which is supplied by VDD going through the LED and the limiting resistor and on its way towards ground. Now I'm specifically looking at the case where the output is in the low state which activates the LED. When the DIO is low, that means the voltage V is simply VDD. And for an ideal output, it would be constant no matter the current that's being demanded by the LED and the current limiting resistor. So that's the ideal behavior. Constant output, voltage regardless of current. Now to take this to the le next level of detail, we recognize that there's actually a built-in current limiter on the MyRio. It's about 65 ohms. Now when we account for that resistance, we recognize that the current supplied by the power supply is flowing through that output resistance, and that means that this voltage at the output is going to be lifted up a little bit by the amount current I times the resistance R out. That means this voltage is going to be reduced somewhat. More specifically, the voltage is going to be the supply voltage minus that drop across R out. That means our voltage current characteristic goes like this. That is, the more current that's demanded, the more that voltage drops from VDD. the slope, at least the slope magnitude, would be that same value as the resistance R out. I'm leaving the sign off here because we're only in interested in magnitude. Now I'm going to change this a little bit and just concentrate now on the voltage as it appears across the diode. That means that the limiting resistance can be lumped in with the output resistance and we see then the voltage current characteristic is still a straight line, just drops off a little faster. Now the reason why I wanted to turn my attention to just the LED is because now we can, on the same plot, overplot the voltage current characteristic of the LED all by itself. It starts out as zero current at zero volts. That's the off state. Then as we increase the current, we see that it changes from being just visible to the behavior when it's very bright. Now, we look at the intersection of these two points, that is where we have the same voltage and the same current. That intersection we call the operating point. And this is where the MyRio output and the LED both agree, so to speak, on the value of voltage and current. So this operating point or intersection between the two curves establishes where the LED operates. When we have a direct connection, we have the intersection with the orange trace. This is where we have no limiting resistor inserted. And at this point, we see that the current is relatively high. This makes sense. If we're not limiting the current with the resistance, then we get a relatively high current. Now, when we consider the limiting resistor in place, then the operating point appears here, and we have a relatively low current. This means that we can choose our limiting resistor to freely place the operating point wherever we would like. And we're looking at a trade-off, really, between the intensity of the LED operation and the amount of current required. Now let's take a look at some specific examples based on the 3.3 volt supply and 65 ohm output resistance. This VI is used to plot the voltage current characteristic of the MyRio output, as well as overplotting a variety of LED voltage current characteristics. 
here is where I can enter my two important values of supply voltage and output resistance and I can select a text file that was based on measurements from the NI Elvis two wire voltage current analyzer. Let's begin with a standard diode just for reference. We see that the curve flattens out around 0.7 volts and we recognize that as being the typical standard voltage drop for conventional diodes. Here's a conventional red LED. We see that it flattens out right around 2 volts. Let's take a look at the violet LED. In this case it flattens out somewhere above 3 volts. And this is a property of shorter wavelength LEDs. They usually have around 3 volts of a, of a forward voltage drop. Now let's go back to basic red LED. If we look at a direct connection, we see that it's possible, but it requires excessive current. This is the operating point we would get for a direct con connection with limiting resistance set to zero. Now supposing I'd like to get that current down to a smaller value, say five milliamps or so. What I'm doing now is raising the current limiting resistor value. We can watch how that curve drops down in terms of intersection point. And in the vicinity of about 220 ohms, we see that we get a smaller and more reasonable current value. 220 ohms is the next closest standard resistor to 228. Now let's try using this same limiting resistor in place and switch back to the violet LED. Now we see that the operating point is up here and the LED demands only one milliamp. Supposing we'd like to get the LED a little brighter, perhaps getting the current closer to 10 milliamps. What I'm doing now is dropping the limiting resistor value and I have to drop it all the way down to zero and we still can't get any higher than just above five milliamps. Actually it turns out the LED is quite bright even at five milliamps. Now typically for high voltage LEDs, a direct connection often requires only moderate current and we can dispense with the limiting resistor. As another example, we can take a look at the white LED. It requires 8 milliamps. Again, this is a direct connection that we're looking at. Here's the green LED. Only needs 4. Blue LED? Looks like it needs 6. We see that for some types of LEDs, a direct connection works quite satisfactorily in terms of giving you good intensity and minimizing current. Taking a look at some of these others, though, in the longer wavelength category like red and orange, we see that the operating point current perhaps is a little bit too high at this area of around 20 milliamps. Now one other consideration I'd like to mention, looking again at the white LED, even though the current is not too bad at 8 milliamps, we might find that this is still way too bright for the requirement. This is often true of high efficiency LEDs. If we get the operating point a little closer to the knee area, which is well under 1 milliamp, we might find that we're getting a good intensity if we're trying to use it as an indicator and not necessarily trying to use it as a flashlight. For some high efficiency LEDs then, using a 2.2K resistor or higher might be appropriate. Well, let's summarize all this by looking at all of the LED traces at the same time. Looking at the collection right here for a direct connection, giving us moderate currents. This collection for a direct connect, we find that the current is rather high using a limiting resistor on the order of 220 ohms pushes the operating points to a more reasonable current level.
All right, I hope you have a better sense of how you can manage the current for the LEDs for your own application.